This situation requires a great deal of finesse. We're going to have to bring in steel. Screw steel. We don't need him. This kind of case is his specialty. All I need is a few mercs. We go in, and I'll smoke them all out. We had a deal. It was a mistake. Screw that. You and I both know we don't make mistakes like that. Why her? Everything's in the dossier. I don't want it that way. You're a goddamn executioner, Ronas. This one doesn't feel right. It's not your call. Why did you kill her? I told you it was way too soon. That man was your responsibility. Plain and simple. everybody doing? My name is Gio Perez and welcome to the greatest martial arts talk show on YouTube, Llama Talk. Well, today I have Art Camacho here, one of the greats. He's not only a martial artist, but he's a director, producer, stunt choreographer. He's worked on over 80 films. He's been featured in Black Belt Magazine, Inside Kung Fu, Cinturón Negro, and etc. Okay, he's been named as uh, one of the top Latino uh, action uh, movie directors by La Opinion, yeah. and uh, and we have him here today, you guys. So I want to welcome you for Thank coming, you, man. I'm really excited <laughs> and blessed to have you here. You know, I've seen you. You know, when I was a kid, I've watched some films, and I've seen you be there. I've seen you fight. I've seen you, you know, with uh, you know, with uh, Don the Dragon Wilson, and uh, seen you Rock Rock, and all these other martial art actors that I grew up with. And uh, tell me about that experience. How, how did martial art come into play for you to be doing? Uh, martial art choreography and getting into these films. Well, for starters, I'm only 21, okay? And I'm sticking to that no matter what. Yeah, he's good. He's <laughs> Number good. Two. <laughs> Number two. Number <clears throat> two. You know, I grew up, I grew up in the barrio, just like a lot of us Latinos did. And, uh, my family was very, very poor. And, uh, you know, they did their best. They did their best under the circumstances. And in fact, in this political climate, I would be considered an anchor baby. Mm -hmm. So you know where my politics lie. But, and, and I'm not trying to get into politics, but the bottom line is that my parents came down here as illegal aliens from, uh, Tijuana, Mexico. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they met there. They crossed the border illegally. They came here to create a good life. And thank God for that. I was born here. And, um, and, and again, growing up, I got into a lot of bad stuff, you know, getting into drugs, fighting, starting to, you know, get into gangs and stuff. And um, two things happened when I when I was uh, 16. Um, um, one was Bruce Lee. I discovered Bruce Lee was phenomenal. I mean, he'd already been out and passed on and everything. But you know, in downtown LA, Los Angeles, they show a lot of these you know revival no, theaters of films. And um, and then at the same time, during that period of time, I got jumped by uh, by gangs. And uh, I got 11 stitches here, stitches all over. Oh wow! And um, and that really changed my whole life, to be honest with you. I mean, for three weeks, I was so afraid to leave the house. And then he started well, How old were you hmm? at that time? At 16. 16 years old. Yeah, okay. And, um, and what happened is that I, I, you know, in the beginning, I made a determination. I really, really just wanted to beat the heck out of everybody. Oh, man. I had so much anger inside of me. And um, then once I started training in martial arts, it started changing my whole life and my whole outlook. Because right now, most of us grow up <laughs> and our barrio or our city or our neighborhood, that's our universe. Most of us eat, breathe, live, and and die in that same universe. Yeah, you're going at that temple. Whatever, yeah. whatever's happening in the barrio, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't see anything beyond. 
the martial arts and Bruce Lee took me beyond. As a matter of fact, I, to this day, I was just telling you a story. I mean, I've been so blessed. This little kid from here, you know, going to India, Germany, uh, uh, England, uh, Singapore. I mean, all over the world and, and all over the States, you know, right. through martial arts, because of martial arts, you know? Right, right, right. Now, when you were 16 and you found martial arts, what style did you begin training? My first style was, was, uh, was, uh, Japanese karate. And, um, and then I, then I, again, I drifted a lot till I found my, my core, but it was karate, then, then I did taekwondo. Okay. And, um, and I was always a fan as a kid watching all these magazines. And I, and I used to see this, this guy named Eric Lee. He's a kung fu master. <laughs> Excuse me. And, uh, just one day out of the blue, I saw that he was doing a seminar in Hollywood. Okay. And I saved up my money and I went to, uh, to one of his seminars and, and I was hooked. Wow. He awesome. was so exciting and so explosive. Not only is he a top notch martial arts as, as a competitor, as a fighter, but just very explosive to me. I mean, it, it, it and it's a my... style of kung fu that he, he yes. used to, yeah, kung yes. Fu. And, uh, so how many years have you practiced kung fu? Because, Ever since I've seen you in magazines, I mean, now that you've been watching magazines when you were a kid, did, did you ever, did it ever, you know, did you ever imagine you were ever going to be in a magazine? I mean, that you're going to be featured as a martial artist in one of those, you know, magazines you used to read. Oh you my know? God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? I never imagined anything. I always dreamed. I always yeah. dreamed that yeah. I wanted to be something great, something to affect change in people, but I never really imagined that I would ever be on the magazines like talk shows, uh, in movies and TV shows, that come on. I mean, as a matter of fact, I remember, and this is this is a true story. And again, a lot of Latinos can relate to this. <laughs> I went to an uncle of mine, who was who was a very successful out there in, in Fresno, California, mm -hmm. and uh, and I told him one day, I said, I said, Theo, I really, you know what, you know what, I really like to do with my life, I like to do movies, you know, TV, do something like that as an actor, and um, he sat me down and he said, Mijo. I love you. I love you, Miho. He's, you know, Miho is a very term of endearment. Yeah. For those of you who don't know. <laughs> and he says, and I'm paraphrasing. Okay. I'm going to paraphrase this. <clears throat> You're butt ugly. You have no talent and you have no personality. Get a real job. Oh, man. And so, <laughs> so at 16, you're, you're hoping to hear him. Yes. Go for it. And it just crushed me. Right. And it crushed me emotionally. It broke me mentally, it broke me in every which way. And so it took me, it took me a long time to finally get over that. And still, to be honest with you, you know, it's so funny. I go to a lot of events and then, you know, uh, being flown all around, magazine covers. But I'm so self-conscious about myself. Okay. I really am about everything I do. So I always have to over-prepare. Uh, that was was a big factor. And that's one thing that, that, that I tell whenever I go to places, tell people, you know what? <clears throat> Don't stop dreaming. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter. Again, this is cliche, but it doesn't matter where you begin, but where you're going to end. Right. You know, right? You always have to be persistent, keep oh, pushing, yeah. how to keep doing it, absolutely, yeah, all the time. And that and that comes into play in martial arts practice because in martial arts practice you begin from something and develop yourself to something. You know, absolutely, you're, you're, you're getting better every time. I mean, sure. I remember when I was practicing martial arts. I remember my first few years. I, I I just remember being dropped on the floor every time. You know, my teacher was this huge guy, and he would just throw me to the floor, throw me. To the floor. I mean, there was one time where I just didn't want to come back. You know, it was that bad. <laughs> But, you know, that decision and then talking to my father and doing this and then coming back and being able to practice just changed my whole, you know, output of what martial arts is about. It's not just, it's not just an art. You know, it's, it's actually a self challenge. Your own, your own self challenge. Nobody else. You don't fight nobody else but yourself. Absolutely. And that's what martial arts <laughs> is to me. You know, to me, that's, that's what it came to be. So. Well, you, well, you know what? <laughs> Along with what you're saying, pretty much it's a lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. a community. It's a family. I mean, to this day, I mean, I, I don't train as much as I like to with my sifus because I train in different styles as well. Right. But my core system is, is one hop quendo under sifu Eric Lee. Mm -hmm. But again, look, at, he's my sifu. So every time I talk to him, it's sifu. It ain't like, hey, Eric. Right. No, no, no. It's sifu. You know, right. There, there's a reverence there, which is not, it's not a coach. It's not a trainer. It's my sifu. Right. And what does Sifu stand for? You know, it, it, to be honest with you, it's, it's like sensei, sensei. or guru mm -hmm. or, <clears throat> or whatever, whatever term it is. To me, it means my mentor, my father, you know, in, in the martial arts yeah. and my teacher. All right. And now let's get back. Let's talk about get your, how did you get into fight choreography? You know, okay. um, I always tell this, this, 
you've got to forgive me. I always tell these dumb stories. But one of them, one of my first films was called Ring of Fire. And uh, and in that film, I didn't know what I was doing. I just they just needed a, a Mexican who can who can go out there and get his butt kicked for fifty bucks, which was me at the time. <laughs> and um, we go out there and we're doing this fight stuff. I mean, I didn't know what it was called choreography. To me, it was just like being a kid playing. And so there's a scene where the two of us are attacking one one uh, kickboxer, and uh, we do take after take. You know, it's a big gang scene in in in, in uh, actually in Chinatown. <clears throat> and what happened was that. At one point in the choreography, he's facing away from me and he's supposed to throw a sidekick because I'm running from behind. So take one, he hit me on the chest. Take two, came a little higher. Take three, but by that point, just so you know, by that point, every time he was hitting me, he said, it was hurting. Okay, okay. But, but I wasn't going to complain. Right, you know, right. it's my first 50 bucks. Come yeah, on, yeah. brother. <laughs> <clears throat> but literally, I was always airborne. So the first time he kicked me, threw me airborne. Second time, same thing. So I timed it. So by the third time, I was ready to jump my feet in the air. So when he catch me, catch me in the air. But unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, he kicked me in the throat. Oh, man. This was a straight on hardcore sidekick right there in the throat, solid. And uh, it looked really bad because literally <clears throat> what people saw was me get kicked in the throat and my body just go flying back and falling on concrete. You know, wow. <clears throat> for me, I, you know, in my head, what was going through my head at that point, it hurt a little. Don't, don't get me wrong. But what was going through my head is I felt, oh man, I messed up. I came back too early, too far. I messed up that guy. You know, I, 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 I hope he didn't get his, his foot hurt. Right, right. I was thinking all that stuff while I'm lying down. And in films, if you work in films, you do not move <clears throat> until they say cut. Right. So here I am lying on the ground and I'm closing my eyes and I'm thinking to myself, I just got fired. My first job in Hollywood as a stunt fighter, and I got fired. And it seemed like forever because I didn't hear cut. Right, right, right. Next thing you know, I decided to open one eye, and people are standing over me looking down. Oh, man. They thought that I was dead. Right, right, and right. And I thought I was fired. So wow. then they say, hey, let's bring that Mexican back. He doesn't complain. He gets hurt. <laughs> I like it. That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's, that's, that's one of my dumb stories. That's oh, one of man. my first beginnings in this, in this industry. That's good. And then how did you get into also directing? You know, because I know you did that for a while and you, yeah. you did some commercials and then you, you got a chance to be able to direct some films. Yeah. You know, what happened is that I loved it so much as a kid. I had a natural knack for it. So I, I did like maybe 20 films and uh, doing fight stunts. And then, um, just by happenstance, the, this director didn't have a, a stunt coordinator working at the time. <clears throat> and he needed to put the quick fight together. So he asked me, he says, Art, can, can you, can you choreograph this? And you know, I said, yeah, sure. And so, you know, I started putting that together and they liked it because it was quick. And, and by that time, you know, backtrack a little bit, I had already directed Spanish commercials. Right. You know, as 18, 19, I was working at a, uh, at a, uh, Spanish language, uh, you know, uh, station that, that, um, studio that, that does commercials. So I kind of understood camera at that point. <clears throat> so when I was choreographing, I knew that, 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 that a lot of these guys didn't know how to shoot it, so I would stage it in such a way so they can see the hits and see all that stuff. Right. And they liked it. So again, 10, 15 films later, you know, I was, I'm, I'm already a choreographer and, and honestly, I did this one film. I think it was called Magic Kid. And the producer had asked me early on, he says, Hey Art, can you get me some, some martial artists for a, for a, like a tournament sequence? Right. So in films, like for instance, when you're doing movies, you go on what they call a tech scout. A tech scout means you go to the locations, so you see cars, buildings, you know, colors and all that stuff. And in the morning, let's say about 9 a.m., he says, hey, I want like 30 guys for the scene. I say, okay, no problem. I can make a couple calls. I got friends of mine. By the end of the day, by 7 at night, that 30 he asked had turned into, you know, 300. He says, can you give me 300? Oh, right. That's a little more challenging, but you know what? I'm, I'm a proud Mexican. I said, yes. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, yes. <laughs> and so, um, so I started, and then he, then he started offering me money. I'll pay you to get these guys. He go, no, 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 no. I mean, I, that's the way I am. If I give you my word, I give you my word. I'm going to live with it. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do it for free. It doesn't matter. So I'm, I'm working. I'm working. I'm, I'm going out there to the school, say, Hey guys, let's get the kids in movies. And I came out with this whole big marketing thing. And at the end of the day, I got commitments of over 700 people that were going to attend. Oh, wow. So what happened is that, and this, this, this is really important because of what happened. <laughs> the assistant director, which is the assistant to the director on the movie set, he said, Hey, Art, if these are your friends and they're coming in for free or next to nothing, you better have a plan because the director might not know what to do with them and they're going to be there for 12, 14, 15 hours. Oh man. And so I thought, Oh man. So here I was, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I''m dumb as dumb can be, but 
I'm drawing X's and O's, X's and O's. Okay, this is a white karate suit, this is a black karate suit, this is this school. And in my head, I was just trying to imagine. I didn't know what I was doing, but I came up with a four-page schematic of how this tournament should be shot. Yeah. And um, and I took it to the director, and who's the producer too, and, and, and he looked at this thing. He was in a meeting, and he looked at it, and he started laughing. So I walked out of the room, and again, and I keep throwing this out there. Maybe, maybe everyone's like that, but me being, you know, Mexican, it's like, nobody laughs at me. You know, right, right, I right. thought he was laughing at me. So I was like, I took umbrage. Right, right. <laughs> I, sorry about that. I took umbrage that he would laugh at me after all that work I did. So, okay, I said, you know what? Done, done. I'm, you know, screw it. I'm going to just get him the guys. I wash my hands. I'm going to sit back. He comes out of the office 15 minutes later and he looked at me and he's looking at the papers and he says, uh, Art, do you want to direct movies? And I thought, you know what? Now he's adding salt. You know what? He cut me. Now he's putting salt in the wound. Now he's making fun of me. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, I'd like to direct. Okay. End of story, right? A week goes by and I get a call from his secretary. <clears throat> she goes, Mr. Camacho, we have one opening this Wednesday. I go, for what? Well, yeah, you, Mr. Mr. Murray, uh, you know, decided, you know, uh, you know, you guys had discussed about directing the film. Right. So he wants to sit down with you and, and, and start picking out which film you want to do. I was like, oh my God, he was serious. Oh man. He was serious. So, so just like that, it wasn't a contract. It wasn't anything. This, this man became my, this, this guy was not only my mentor in directing. He gave me my first choreography gig. He gave me my Screen Actors Guild card. I mean, I owe him wow, a complete man. career. Wow. That's know? awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. True, true story. Just like that. I mean, I. Well, that's awesome. The right timing too. Right, right timing. time, right everything. Yeah. So, man, but, that's but you know great. What? But you know what? The key uh, that I thought number one is, 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 is create a, uh, create something that people want to be a part of. Create, whether it's you as a person or a project that you're doing, you know, because, um, that's what happened. I mean, and always give 200%. Right. Never give 100%. Give 200%. You know, and that's, that's basically what, what led me to that point. I was very, very blessed. Number one, the Lord has blessed me so many times. And uh, because I really, really should not be sitting here with you. And I feel honored that you're even considering me, you know, to, to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to have you here, really. Oh, man, thank you. Yeah. And um, you have uh, your latest film coming out. It's The, the Chemist. Okay. And he was I, calling it The Alchemist. The it's chemist. The Chemist. The Chemist. And I saw the trailer. It looks, it looks really good, man. It looks action packed. I saw, no, actually, he, I saw, no, he hasn't even seen it. He no, goes, no, what is it? Is it a love saw, story? No, I saw the trailer. That's what I wanted to ask you about because I did see the trailer. There's a lot of action in it. And, but what's the story about? Okay. First off, you're going to go to theaters to see it. Number one. Yeah. I don't want you to stream it. <laughs> no, you know what? <clears throat> Funny thing about the chemist <clears throat> in a nutshell. That film came together, the, the story, the whole concept, everything came together in probably about 45 minutes. Oh, man. 45 minutes. Because I had a friend of mine from New York who says, hey, I got, I got some people who want to invest in films. I've known them for a lot of years. So I had a couple of different scripts and stuff like that, and I didn't think it was right. So I'm being flown to New York, and I, I could not even think of a story. But you know what? Money motivates you. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. <laughs> you wave, you wave a million dollars in my face. Trust me, I can come up with every idea under the sun. No, but seriously, um, it was, it's, 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 it's a, basically every good movie, whether Jurassic Park, uh, Avengers, the, all the stuff you see on the surface is fun. It's really awesome. But the movie has to be about something. Right. And so to me, honestly, the chemist was about, Someone letting go. Okay, and I'll tell you, the the lead, the protagonist, um, he had an experience <laughs> where he could not save the the life of his wife, and um, and that really affected him a lot. <clears throat> and so, and he's not a man of violence, even though there's a lot of action, good action. Um, but what he does, he was a chemical engineer, so he uses chemistry to create these hits. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, the chemist, if you want to put a slug line, it's the uh, mechanic. Remember the mechanic, the film with Charles Bronson and then the remake with Pat, uh, uh, Statham? Okay, yeah, yeah. The mechanic meets the bodyguard. Okay. It's about, it's about a, a trained assassin who eventually finds love and a lot of fun stuff. You got no streaming. You got to buy the movie watch, or, or go watch it. You guys got to watch that movie, you guys. <laughs> you guys got to watch it. You don't watch movie? I... I I saw last night was the Confessions of a Pit Fighter. That's what I saw. And you got, uh, you had, uh, Rampage in that movie. Rampage, right? You had, um, 
uh, the rapper, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Um, Flavor Flav! Yeah, you had Flavor Flav in that movie, and, and then you also had, uh, you know, the, the guy from the, uh, Mambo Kings, man. I used to oh, watch yeah. that movie. Armando Yeah. He's such a good actor, man. And I know you had him as a, as a headline, too. <laughs> you know, you had him as a, as a yeah. first actor. That, and he's really good. How, how was it oh, working with him? Oh my God. I'm serious. Every film I do, with no exaggeration, brother, I'm still that little kid on the outside out there in, 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 in the barrio just watching these guys. I'm do still their thing, that, huh? Oh my God. It was amazing. Armando Sante is, is, is an incredible actor. It's so, I, I, I can't even describe. How wonderful it is to, to, to work with him. Yeah, I've never, is that him? Is that him or, or he actually comes into that character? He comes into the character, but every big actor, every actor that you see that of that caliber is always a part of them in, in the role. Oh, He's always a part of them in the role. Got it. You know? <laughs> and he gave of himself. I mean, I've worked with a lot of great actors. Well, it, you know, um, that one, the, on, on the chemist was him and then, uh, James Russo was another guy, really incredible. Um, the funny thing is that, that again, this is a lesson for, uh, for all of you guys who are wanting to act. There are a lot of martial arts out there that think, okay, I, I, I look good. I got, you know, I got a six pack and I can <laughs> kick. And that ain't nothing. I, I could, there's, there's a thousand, thousands upon thousands of guys that I can find that have six packs and can kick. Right. But it's being able to express that. It's that Bruce Lee thing. Right. Bruce Lee had a natural gift. You know, but a lot of these actors, if you look at their scripts, uh, let's say somebody who's a novice would look at a script and say, okay, it says lines. And let's say he comes into the door and he says, hi, Lucy, I'm home, you know. But these actors, when you see their scripts, they're all marked up with little notes because right. in their head, so many things are going on before he says that one line. Right. <laughs> and But a lot of it, because of their experience or they're naturally gifted, it just comes so natural. Oh, man. So, yeah. and you know, you know, cause I, I wrote that, that one as well. Right, right. <laughs> I wrote and co-produced it and, um, did the choreo. <laughs> I did everything. Man. You did everything. You, you, I was, you I was the cooking, man. I was making the hot tacos there, man. Yeah, no, that was good. Yeah. Good. I, I, I like the fight scenes. Okay. I like cool. it. It was, it was, it was you a know, good movie. It, it was, it, you know what? That one was loosely based on some of the experiences I had in, in, in life. Okay. You know, as a matter of fact, some of the characters were named after a certain family members. His, his voice, uh, because you see the narration was, mm -hmm. whose voice was James that? James Russo. James Russo was the voice. Powerful. Okay. Yeah, he was really good. He Powerful. Really good. You know, um. At first I thought it was you. You know, when, when I started hearing the narrator, I thought it was you for some reason. But then no, you know, it was, you know, it was, <laughs> it was him. Um, so you wanna, you know, another thing that you're gonna do for us, you're gonna demonstrate a little bit of, uh, fight choreography here. In Lama Talk, so we have well, him, well, we have the, the fight master, the master of action. <laughs> He's gonna choreograph some stuff for us, so, um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. What is your budget? We have Did zero, you talk to my agent? No, we, we have no, we have fruits, water, that's our What did I tell you? Look at this, another Mexican. <laughs> that's what we have. Another Mexican. Where, you know, I'm just a broke Mexican man. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right. So, All right, see, that. they're abusing me. They're taking advantage yeah. of Mike. But you know, we want to see, we want to see what he does. And Hey guys, this is Art Camacho. I'm here with Giovanni, the man, the myth, the legend, Perez, and then Chris Bato, kickboxer, martial arts extraordinaire. And what we're going to do here is pretty much put together a quick, quick three or four beat fight. And what we're going to do is do a lot of the angles that you're going to see, like in a real fight, in, in terms of a screen fight. So what we did, we worked out a couple pieces here, and they're going to walk through it once, so you can see it in slow motion, and then walk through it at fast speed, just like we do in the movies. Okay? Got you guys ready? We're ready. Okay, great, 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 great. Remember, film is forever. <laughs> and action. Ready, set up. Half speed rehearsal. Walk through it once. Slow. One, two, three, four. Oh. Okay, good, good, okay, let's do it again. Freeze, freeze, do not move until I say action. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it for real, and uh, safety first, guys. Safety first, keep the intensity up. Remember, buy yourself the distance when you throw the back fist, and remember to duck on the back fist, because I don't want it too, too high, then it'll look straight. Okay, guys, ready? And set it up, and safety first, guys, and action. And cut. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent job, guys. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a reverse of the action. Okay, walk through it once. And now freeze. And on this one, let's go full speed. You guys feel it? Are you feeling it? Yes or no? Safety. Safety. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Let's go and 
So we just finished here with Chris, and we had the fight match. Oh man, that was, here. it was hard for me. Was, these guys had the easy part. Yeah. I had the hard part. And you know what? This guy's great. They're both great. Came in here, started teaching me some choreography, helped me out here. And uh, I know you have classes, choreography classes. Uh, is it once a month or? Yeah, no, what I do is I go around the country teaching fight seminars, but screen fight seminars. Because what I do is I get skillful martial arts like yourself, like right, Chris, and I show you how to adapt it for film. Awesome. Because it's an art form. It's an art form. Great. So you guys got to look him up, Art Camacho, on Facebook. Uh, reach him out, reach out to him, and uh, hope to see you in one of those seminars, guys. See ya. Thank you. I had the hardest part. They got the easy part. <laughs> you know what? I really want to thank you again. and. You know, this is a great experience for me and everything. Every 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 time I have somebody here, I learn something. I'm getting better at it. And, you know, you're one of those that, that uh, you know, just gives me hope to be able to keep going, you know? No, man. So having you here is awesome, you know, because having just another Latino that came from martial arts and doing his thing, you know, just like I want to do, you know, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's well, you know, great. Like, to you and to everybody, and I tell you, I mean, I'm a speck of sand in this whole big picture of Hollywood and yeah. stuff like that, but... I've been very blessed. As a matter of fact, I'm doing two films right now, apart from The Chemist. We're finishing up The Chemist. Right. And we're doing Skate God, another one called Knuckles, another one that I'm developing called Road Bullet. But, backtrack, is dream. Don't be afraid to dream. Dare yourself to dream. But, don't wait for other people to give you opportunities. You create your own opportunities. I'm telling you. I've, uh, even now, to this day, believe it or not, it's hard for me to get hired from different uh, stunt coordinators. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of not in that clique because Hollywood is very cliquish. And one thing that I tell everybody when I do, because I do seminars, right. by the way, I do seminars. <laughs> when is your next seminar, by the way? I'm the next one, I think it's going to be in uh, Florida. Florida, yeah. On, okay, on so you know what? Summer. We'll have that information for yeah. you guys and uh, so you guys could get a little bit of information yeah. on that in Florida. But First off, when you step into, I'm giving you some advice on how to break in Hollywood. <laughs> First off, acknowledge that nobody wants you to be in Hollywood. A lot of the Latinos who are big in Hollywood do not want you in Hollywood. I'll tell you that right now. Bottom line. Two, the people, the stunt coordinators, stuff like that, do not want you in Hollywood. Okay, so you got the big producers, Latinos, you got the stunt coordinators who don't want you in Hollywood. But that doesn't mean you're not going to make it. What you gotta do is work 10 times harder. I have to work 100 times harder than anybody. Because I am not gonna take no for an answer. I'm gonna keep knocking on doors, keep knocking on doors before I knock them down, and then knock down the rest of the doors. You know, as a matter of fact, I was so blessed that, um, and not to brag, but I'm just telling you, <clears throat> on the chemist, we, we just got, you know, 10 nominations at the Action on Film Film Festival for, for, for our little, our the chemist that I put together in like 45 minutes. Just a thought. Wow. It sort of took a longer. Yeah. But just, Gosh, guys, I can't tell you enough to please dream, follow those dreams, no matter what they tell you, no matter how many no's, no matter how many heartbreak, if it's what you want. I've sacrificed so much. I mean, I, I went to a period of time. I lived out of my car for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm digging <laughs> couches for nickels, pennies, and dimes, uh, living on top ramen suits. But I wanted it so bad with all my heart. Right. You know, and, and everybody told me, no, you're this, you're that. And that's what I told you. I mean, I, I, life isn't perfect. Life isn't great. But you know what? Deal with it. Talk. Do it. Make it. Especially now. Right now, Latinos are being made the scapegoat for all the ills of America. Definitely. Whereas we have a rich culture. And Art Camacho is here to tell you. We can do it. Si se puede. Yeah. That's right, you guys. Okay, Art, where, where can, where can they find Art Camacho? They can find Art, you know, I had several websites, but the thing is, I am so illiterate, and I was always at the mercy of web, webmasters. <laughs> That's the worst thing. So now I just do Facebook. Facebook is the best way to, to get a hold of Art Camacho. And, and again, I can't take too many more friends, because you know how they have that limit. Right. But yeah. please, still communicate, and be serious. I mean, that's the best way. Well, anyway, you can find Art Camacho on Facebook, you guys. You can also find this show at Llama at Facebook. 
Uh, you can also find me at Like Water Productions, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And don't forget to reach me at lamartialart at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see masters just like him and other martial artists, you guys. Don't forget to comment. We want to hear. We want to, we want to know what you guys want to want. Okay. We want to, uh, we want to hear what you think about our Camacho. We want to, I want, I want to hear what you want to say about the, the chemist of his movie coming out and some other films. So don't forget you guys and talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much.